Now, the purpose of this video is I get a lot of comments from people who lose their record, play, and stop buttons and can't seem to find where they went. They think they installed Reaper incorrectly or lost it during an update or just have a bug in the software. But none of that is true. To review, up over here, we have our tracks. Over here is our media or audio. And down over here is our mixer. And up here, where our buttons are, is known as the transport. To hide our mixer, we can go to the view menu and deselect it here. Now we don't see our mixer. Our transport moves down here. To see the mixer again, we could choose it from here. Now it shows up again with a transport above it. But we could also hide the transport right here. Now it's gone or see it again right here. And it comes back. And we could also use keyboard shortcuts to hide and show it or toggle it, which is probably what happens when you lose these buttons. If we go up here, we could see keyboard shortcut for the transport is all control T on the PC or option command T on the Mac. If we hit that keyboard shortcut, it hides the transport and our record, play, and stop buttons. Hit it again, it comes back. So let's go through how the transport works. These buttons over here are going to move the play cursor from the beginning or the end of our project. So if we hit this one, we go to the end of our song, hit this one, it goes back to the beginning. But we could right click these buttons and choose this option, which is off by default. But if we turn it on and we have markers or regions up here, we could scroll through them with these buttons. Hit it once, it goes to my verse. Here's to the good days. Hit it again, it goes to my pre chorus. Maybe it's something. Hit it again, it goes to the chorus. And we can hit these buttons again to go back to the beginning. But again, this is off by default, so turn it on if you want this behavior. Or leave it off to go to the end or the beginning. Then we have the record button. If we put a track into record, hit the record button. It starts recording to this track. Or we can hit play. Stop and even pause. And it'll pause right here, hit it again, and it plays from there. Hit stop, go back to the beginning, and play it again. Now we can trigger play and stop by toggling it with the space bar. Hit it, goes into play, hit it again, it stops. And to go into record, we could hit Control R on the PC or Command R on the Mac. Hit it again. It comes out of record. Hit the space bar to stop. And we could also loop our playback. If we create a time selection from bar one to bar three, when this is on, it's going to loop the time selection. But if we turn it off, it's going to play back and stop at the end. Hit escape to clear the time selection. Then over here, we see where we are on the timeline. By default, it's based on bars and beats, which we could change by right clicking and go down here and choose any time unit you want. We could choose minutes and seconds. And we see minutes and seconds over here instead. Or seconds or samples or time code or absolute frames. But let's put it back to measures and beats. And you notice we have two different readouts to choose from. This is known as the secondary readout, which is minutes and seconds. And we can change this by right clicking, go down here, the secondary time unit, and change it here. If you want to use time code, we could see it here at the same time as seeing our bars and beats. 
let's put it back to minutes and seconds. Now we can jump around with our transport by double clicking in here. We can jump to any bar we want. Let's go to bar five, hit OK, and our play cursor starts at bar five. Here's to the good days. Or bar nine. I don't want to fight no more. Or back to bar one. We could also jump around based on time. So you can double click it. Maybe want to jump to 30 seconds. We could use this format to type in minutes and seconds. So we'll type in 00, zero colon 30, and it goes to exactly 30 seconds right over here. And we could also hit the W key to take us back to the beginning of our project right over here. But let's say our song starts at bar five. Let's delete this. Here's the start of our song. Here's to the good day. But now our readout is at bar five instead of bar one. If we want to change that so our readout and our song starts at bar one, we can go to the file menu and choose project settings under the project settings tab and change it right here to measure one based on where our cursor is. In this case, bar five. Choose this, hit OK. Now our song starts at beat one, giving us negative bars before the song. Here's to the good days. Here's to the... But notice our time is off, the minutes and seconds. It starts at eight seconds. So if we wanted to jump to 30 seconds in the song, it wouldn't be 30 seconds because of all the space over here. So if we want to change the minutes and seconds as well, go back to project settings, go to the same menu, and set zero to current at a cursor position. Notice it puts it at a negative number as it did for our start measure. Hit OK. Now zero seconds is here as well, right here. So now if we want to jump to 30 seconds in our song, it's going to be accurate. Right over here is exactly 30 seconds from the beginning of our song, which is now exactly bar one. Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows. Then down over here, we could see what our transport is doing. Right now it's stopped, but if we go into play, here's it shows us days. we're playing. Here's to the well, if we here's pause to the it, we could see it's paused. Good days. If we go into record, Days. Days to the we could see Days we're recording. Then over here, we could see our time signature, which we could double click to change, maybe make it 3 4 or 6 8. And the numbers change up here to match that time signature. And we could also change over here our tempo. Right now it's set to 115 beats per minute. Let's make it faster. And the song will play back faster. Here's to the good days. Here's to the sorrow. And notice it doesn't change the pitch. It just time stretches it so it plays back faster. And we could do the opposite if we make the number lower. It'll play back slower. Here's to the good days. Here's to the sorrow. And again, it doesn't affect the pitch, which is the opposite of how the rate works. We slow it down over here. It's going to play back slower, but also pitched lower, like an old school tape machine would do. Here's to the good days. Here's to the sorrow. And if we go up, it does the opposite, it plays back faster, and also adjusts the pitch. Here's to the good days. Here's to the sorrow. Which could be useful if you can't hit a higher note, play it back slower. Here's to the good days. Sing that note in record and play it back normal. Here's to the good days. Now, if we want to hide the time signature and the rate, maybe you don't want to accidentally choose it, we can right click in here and hide the play rate. It doesn't show up. Or hide the time signature. And that doesn't show up either. But by default, they both will. And finally, we could change where we see the transport. If we right click it, 
We could stop docking it from the main window. And now it's floating in its own window. So we could put it any way we want. We'll put it back in the main window and change its position. Right click it, go to transport position and change it from its default below the arrangement window to above the ruler. It shows up up here or at the bottom of the main window shows up down here. We'll put it back where it is by default, which is below the arrangement window right down here. So when we close the mixer, we'll see it down here. But if we show the mixer, it goes above it and below the arrangement window. So it's pretty flexible where we're going to see it in Reaper. So that's pretty much it. That's the you lose your record, play, and stop buttons in Reaper. Hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go. Mom!